This is the eighth video in a big series that I'm doing on mapping out and practicing melodic arpeggio guitar shapes on the guitar. Each video in this series features a different chord type. In this video, we are doing diminished seven, one of the coolest, weirdest, most interesting chord types out there. And we're gonna work on the five different positions, five different places to uh, arpeggiate this chord, to play just the chord tones of this chord. This is unusual. There's so many ways to work on the diminished seven chord. Uh, and we'll talk about that when we go to the guitar view and I play you the examples. But the way that I recommend doing it is having still five different shapes that we're thinking of, even though, as you will see, some of those shapes are physically the same thing as each other. We're just thinking of the root being in a different place. Some very interesting stuff, and the sound is so cool. This is necessary if we want to improvise and just target chord tones, follow the changes perfectly when we're playing on chord progressions, and if a diminished seven chord comes up, which it does in a lot of music, we wanna have this structure melodically mapped out on the guitar. On top of that, it's just great technique practice. It's great music theory practice on the fretboard. It's great for ear training because we're just, we get to listen to these chords broken up as we're playing them on the guitar. If you want a free resource to follow along, I have a chord tone vocabulary pack, free PDF download. Use the link in the top of the description to get that. Has 12 different chord types, five positions of each chord including, of course, the diminished seven chord from this lesson. In this video, I'm gonna just demonstrate through up and down each of the five shapes and positions of the diminished seven chord arpeggio guitar shapes that I want you to be able to practice and, and play in that way that I'm gonna show you. Then I'm gonna go through and recommend exactly what fingerings that I think you should use and what I'm using when I demonstrate it. And lastly, we're just gonna improvise with each of those five shapes of the diminished seven chord. That's what we wanna do, get them down enough that we can just play around with them because that's how we are going to integrate it eventually into playing with real music. <laughs> I'm Jared Borkowski from soundguitarlessons.com. On this channel, I teach on a wide variety of guitar topics. I have a bunch of lessons on this channel, all designed to help you gain more creative control over music and express yourself more freely. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and hit the bell. All right, I've really been enjoying doing this series so far. We're gonna map out the five arpeggio shapes, the chord tone forms in the five positions for diminished seven. Now this is where it gets uh, more challenging, more interesting, more unusual, and um, just less common that we find uh, kind of a roadmap for for this kind of improvisation over this kind of chord. The diminished seven chord is so interesting. It's it's a symmetrical chord that's built of only minor third intervals. Um, and so my particular approach to this is that I still think of five different uh, scale or arpeggio shapes and scale shapes uh, for it even though there's really only two of them. So I'll show you what I mean as we go through this. But what I recommend is if you're interested in feeling really good about improvising over various types of chord qualities, including diminished seven, uh, but any others, I'm doing this whole series, one video on each chord type and doing all five positions of the chord tones and how to improvise over them. Um, check out some of the other videos in the series if you haven't yet, because I go over so many details for just the general philosophy of how to approach this. For this, I'm gonna kind of go through just more mapping out the diminished seventh chord and, and uh, spend maybe less time on some of the underlying philosophy things for improvising. Uh, so check out some of those other videos, but let's just go through this here. We wanna do five steps minimum. This is kind of just a map, road map that I made for improvising over chords. There's a lot of other things you can do, but I like to have a nice organized kind of checklist. So the first thing we wanna be able to do is have our chord tone shape, our arpeggio shape, really mapped out by playing the root to root approach where you start on the lowest root, you go to the next root, you repeat that, you don't repeat anything else, and you end on that same root again. Start on the root, repeat the root, repeat any time you hit a root, and play all the notes around it as well. So I'll do that one more time. Okay, so this is one of the chord, uh, chord arpeggio shapes where all of these shapes come from. And this is important to talk about with, the, with all of these diminished shapes, though it's the case with all of them in this whole series. The reason they are the way they are, because you could play any chord type in many different ways. The reason I have them mapped out this way is that this 
coincides with the diminished scale with a particular fingering of the diminished scale. So we'll talk about that in a little bit with adding extra notes in one of our improvisation steps. But at first we just wanna do this and the fingering, even though you'll see me do it in a few different ways, I think just staying, staying as kind of relaxed as possible is always the best thing. So uh, first finger, fourth finger, and you can just go middle finger here and then shift over to first finger and then stay in the second position. So fourth finger, third, first, fourth, and shift over. So you have a little bit of a kind of a hop over, shift, reach a little bit. So you're in third position, shift over to second, shift back to third. Okay. That can feel like if you're trying to play all these three of these at once, it can feel like a stretch, but it doesn't have to be. You can just kind of be very relaxed and hop over there. So that's that. The second thing we always want to do is I'm doing with all of these chord types in this whole series is play a melodic pattern and I'm using the same melodic pattern in all of them. Such good practice, okay? That's step two. Step three is that we want to just improvise just kind of continuously. Make sure we can just play constant notes with chord tones and not just playing up and down it, though you can do that as part of it like this. But that doesn't really count. It's supposed to be part of mapping it out. So slow it down if you need to and try to hop around so you can really see. Can you see all of the options at once like it's a map that you're looking down on? You can have fun with it too by kind of creating a groove but you're not really stopping because the next phase is to do something that is uh, intentional musical phrasing so in this one we're really playing something and giving a kind of playing something and giving space and then playing something that concludes or reacts to that idea diminished if you and we're only using chord tones still so it's very limiting, but we need to try to make a musical idea out of it. So a lot of these, I'll start with the root. So there's plenty you can do with very few notes if you phrase it rhythmically in the right way. So I wasn't happy with that, so my reaction to it is to go back and repeat it, which um, which does a lot of good for kind of making it sound more intentional. So anyway, you want to try to make actual musical ideas. Something that sounds like a, a song. And then the last thing is to try to add notes around it. So by now, you're really comfortable with just all the notes. You've been playing around with it. You're, you even made some like musical phrasings that sound like they could be a melody of a song. And now it's like, well, what? You have your, your quote unquote good notes. What else can be around those notes? Okay, well, with all the other chord types so far, I've said really you can do anything and you can. Every note can work. You can just start getting. And it works very well with the, with the diminished chord actually to just play um, very chromatically and you can get all completely outside of any harmony and then just land right back on chord tones again and you're and you're fine which is why it's so good to know them uh, but with the diminished chord there's kind of a simple formula which is nice you can actually just add a note right half step below any note or half step above any note and by doing that you're constructing the diminished scale so if you go Oh, well, that's that half step below that note. It's a half step above this note. Okay. That's a chord tone. Oh, there's a half step below. Oh, there's a half step above. If you mapped all that out, you just have the diminished scale. Which works well. Let me play. I like to add the looper for this so we hear the context. Thank you. 
you can nail this chord. I mean, it's such a great one to practice. This is a chord that, well, it's so logical, but it's also so, uh, in a way, it makes it more kind of confusing to work on because there's, there's so many different ways to play with it. But this is a chord that when it comes up in songs, and it comes up in much more than just jazz music, a diminished seven chord, in Beatles songs and in, in, in a lot of music, uh, diminished seven chord will come up. It's a chord that is so easily just kind of passed over, kind of not really, we're not really nailing it perfectly when we're, when we're improvising over it. If you can nail this chord when it comes up in a song and, and maybe like a measure, it comes up for maybe a measure or even a couple beats, if you can play something, maybe just chord tones or maybe something with those notes around it where you really know where you are, it really shows. It really sounds just gorgeous. And it has this sound and this feeling of like, oh my gosh, that person knows exactly where they are in the changes. That's our eventual goal, right? To have that much control. Um, and we're not talking about the context of, ch of chord changes yet. I will in the future on this channel, but we're just doing all this vocabulary work first. We need to feel good just on the chord itself to feel good when it comes up briefly in actual music. Let's move on to the next positions of this diminished seven chord. We're going to do the same five steps through the other four positions. Okay, here's the next shape of C diminished seven with the root to root method. <laughs> The root to root is so important here because these shapes, that shape is gonna be used again in the next position and the next one after that, but we're starting on this C every time. Um, and wherever the C is, is where we're gonna kind of land in here. Okay, then we're gonna do the pattern. And then we're going to do that kind of constant improv. And I'm, and I'm going fast through what might take you months. Might take you a lot of work. Totally fine, enjoy that process. It took me a long time to work all this out. I also kind of had to invent a method that worked for me to, I learned a lot of a lot of the principles of this stuff from non-guitar players, so I had to kind of create a guitar approach that felt like it really did justice and, and made sense of the fretboard for me. Okay, so I don't mean to just go up and down. This is our improv segment. Get comfortable with that, then try to do something musical with it. Love that flat five. It's funny that that sounds so so consonant in a way, but it's a diminished seventh chord, which is notoriously um, causing dissonance and wanting to go somewhere. But when you when you play it with such confidence, with a with a musical rhythmic statement. It, it doesn't feel like it's really that thing that is uh, that everyone thinks of as a, like where's it gonna go it needs to resolve somewhere you know resolving to, to some kind of chord so it's the power of uh, phrasing so after that we're gonna try to add some of those notes and we know that uh, can add a half step below anything or a, half, a whole step below anything and then you're just creating the diminished scale and of course feel free to just add any chromatic notes as well just explore just have fun i'll play this loop for a second Could sit there all I could do that all day. <laughs> so just that's how that's how good you want it. You want it to be kind of addictive in that way. That's 
That's when you know you're on the right track. Like, oh, I don't really want to stop doing this. But we got to move on to the next position. So the next position here is the exact same physical shape. So what we had was this. And now we have... Because this chord, just like the chord shape, if you, you might know this about this chord, if not, don't worry about it right now. But this chord shape, every three frets, inverts to itself. You're, you're playing a different voicing of the exact same uh, chord by moving the same shape, just because it's a symmetrical structure of a chord. So this uh, arpeggio shape off of this eighth fret, and this ar same arpeggio shape off of the fifth fret, is what we're using. Now we are using two different arpeggio shapes because we're doing a different one over here and that'll come back at the end of this as well. Um, but as we know, the big difference is where the root is. So we're gonna do the root to root off of this. That's the power of the root to root. It really contextualizes it. Okay, now we're gonna do the, the melodic pattern. going to do the constant improv challenge yourself in this however works best for you if i slow it down i can kind of do more skips and jumps and experiment and if i speed it up it's a fun challenge for just like can i keep this going and keep it clean um, and so different ways to approach that and then try to do something with musical phrasing. Ah, just trying some stuff. But try to do something that feels good for you. the uh, the formula now and now we're gonna add those chromatic notes anything else around it that you get to decide for yourself what do you like the taste of you could even just do this and then when you go back to the chord tones you're in familiar territory let's play around with that loop have fun with it I'll get into kind of phrasing mode sometimes while I'm doing that and then I'll get into kind of just like let me try to add a bunch of notes and try stuff and you know all kinds of different approaches and get, getting weird with it versus just trying to one note at a time find a tasty note option let's go on to the next position the next position is the same physical chord tone sh arpeggio shape once again but the root is here okay so but if we look at it purely as a full physical shape, it's the same thing. Again, that's why it's so important to target the root because otherwise we just are gonna get confused with how similar they are. And that's why diminished seven chord is both so approachable and so confusing and intimidating at the same time. Okay, so a root to root. Do that again. Okay, and then pattern. <laughs> I just wanted to hear that root. That's a good sign that I'm targeting the root so much that it's in my ear that I want to hear it there. Uh, and then just try to be able to improvise over it. I'll do the loop for this for fun. Just quarter notes, 
maybe switch to eighth notes. Can we just keep going? Speed it up if you want. Okay, then try something with musical phrasing. Take your time with it, play, play with it, take some risks, find things that work for you, all of that. Um, and then try to explore some of those outside sounds. When in doubt, go back to chord tones. why chord tones are so powerful. If you start with scales, it's harder to kind of know where your home base is. I like to start with chord tones and then kind of work notes around that. Let's go to the final position of the C diminished seven arpeggio shape. Now this is gonna be the same physical form as we did as the first one. Okay, but with root to root. I'll do that again. Okay, and then our melodic pattern. <laughs> One more time. And then constant improv, however works for you. You know, it should get to a point where you're sick of it, where you're just like, oh my gosh, all I'm playing is these chord tones. That's good, we need to hit the edge. We need to hit the edge of our taste. So it forces us to push beyond that. That's gonna really happen with your playing all the time. I'm sure you felt that. I'm so sick of that thing I play all the time. Well, that's a necessary thing that has to happen. It's like a snake shedding its skin. Like that, that's being annoyed in that way is what makes us find the next thing that feels amazing and fresh. Okay, so you work on that and then try your phrasing. With diminished, it's like, okay, that one and flat three just sound, you can really make a consonant kind of idea out of that. So I'm trying to do something a little different just since I do so much of that. There's that thing of kind of like, well, I've been doing that a lot. Let me branch out, right? You can even be very busy and make a nice phrase by pausing and then you react to it. Right, end it in a different way, end it on the root. You get the idea, you're exploring that stuff. And then play around with adding those extra notes. Any note below a half step, any note above a half step. Again, this is one where if you can feel good about a diminished seventh chord when it comes up in a song and switch what you're playing. We'll talk about switching mid playing in the future on, on this channel. I'll do a bunch of lessons on that and phrasing and stuff too. But oh, it's a beautiful feeling to, to just hit that diminished seventh chord and, and just target it. And this is the beginning of that. This is how we set up the foundation for that. So that's it for those arpeggio shapes for diminished seven. 
and uh, we're just going to keep doing the same formula on a few more chord types uh, that are very powerful to have under our fingers in the next few videos. That chord is pretty cool, really fun one to play. If you want to get that free PDF download, my chord tone vocabulary pack shows all the melodic arpeggio guitar shapes from this whole series, definitely the ones that we did today with diminished seven chord. Just use the link in the top of the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chord tones. Please hit that like button if you liked this lesson and I post a new lesson every week. Next week we are continuing on with this series and we're going to do dominant seven sus four. We're getting increasingly kind of more obscure or more more rare with the chord types that we're outlining but we want to do this as deeply as we can over time and have all this vocabulary to improvise with when a dominant seven sus four chord comes up in a chord progression we want to know have those chord tones mapped out with the five shapes of them that's what we're doing next week can't wait to see you there thanks for watching take care and happy practicing mm -hmm.